Manchester United defeated by Arsenal at the Emirates, Sancho's statement and more. The United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. <sighs> Blessings everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Sir. When it rains, it pours. But let's touch on this game first where Manchester United lost 3-1 against Arsenal at the Emirates. And it's always a big game when it's Manchester United versus Arsenal. But going into it, we've known about the struggles away from home against top half sides, against big six rivals. So compared to our performances this season, we had to be significantly better than our past. What stood out to me early in this game was how we used Andre Onan. In my opinion, it was the most he's been involved in a game possession-wise so far this season. And you could see that the team were a lot more patient in building up from the back. And that all comes from the nonchalance and confidence from Onana himself. I think we did that quite well to be honest, even if you could say that Arsenal didn't look to cause us many problems in the press constantly. Mm. Especially in the first half now, when we did find players in those areas to advance the ball forward, rarely did we complete a pass or make the correct decision, giving us an opportunity to create some dangerous chances, which is why when Marcus Rashford gave us the lead after 25 minutes, it came out of nowhere. But you take it, I, I take it, you take it, you take it, I'm sure. Reminiscent yeah. of the game in January where Rashford also fired his team into the lead. This time around, Christian Eriksen pounced on a poor touch from Kai Havertz, played the ball through to our left winger, and as Ben White provided him with the opportunity to cut inside and find space for the shot, MR10 delivered. Now, I don't think we were given a minute to celebrate before Odegaard equalized for Arsenal. We went from seeing a replayable Nana celebrating in slow motion to then getting packed in and telling the team to calm down. Man. You're most vulnerable after scoring. Everybody knows that saying. And we got absolutely played through. A really good move to be fair with one and two touch passing culminating with an emphatic finish from their captain. Nonetheless, it's a poor goal to concede so quickly after scoring and a lapse of concentration defensively where I believe for the most part we were much improved in that area on Sunday. Let me know what you think in the comments. The second half for me was a very different game for Elik Ten Hag's side. Don't get me wrong, Arsenal did create chances in that first half but as time progressed in the second period they added more urgency and aggression in the final third. While we really couldn't get a hold of the ball consistently enough to affect the tempo of the game as CM touched on earlier. Reoccurring problem with this team, but I digress. We had our moments, but overall concentration was key defensively. What was so crazy is how many directions this game could have headed into. You look at the now disallowed penalty, on the Wan-Bissaka tackle and how Anthony Close. Taylor was challenged by those operating in VAR to refer to the monitor where we actually found out that Havertz inadvertently initiated the contact. AWB did miss his challenge to win the ball but didn't connect with the German. As the game was coming to a close, you saw Saka presented with a massive opportunity shot straight at the goalkeeper and the moment for us which probably will haunt many over the break Alejandro Garnacho's goal that involved some really slick play from Bruno. Rasmus Hoyland who came on later in the game and Casemiro as the through ball specialist. The issue wasn't anything but the decision to call it offside. Ten Hag spoke about it being wrong and how it was viewed at an incorrect angle. We've seen plenty of fans take to socials and agree with that. One thing we do know is that it was extremely tight and it is tough to determine all of this stuff, but there isn't a lot of good faith with officiating teams in football right now. And something like this won't exactly help to transform those negative connotations. Was it on? Was it off? Let us know in the comments. Everything unfortunately fell apart for us in added time. Arsenal pushed us further back and to be fair this was even before this moment but they pushed us further back and we settled to hold out for a point which Good doesn't enough. always sit well with me and 
just doing that within itself is going to be really tough due to the number of minutes that will be adding on at the end of games but even tougher for teams like us who are struggling with quality bench options we didn't have a trusted midfielder on the bench McTominay was missing due to illness and Sofian Amlabat wasn't available it's been revealed actually that during the medical testing process he had a minor back injury minor so hopefully it's not going to affect him too much going forwards we'll have to see if he competes uh, for his team in international break which I'm sure he will Morocco and and what happens when we do come back from the international break and the, the defenders that we brought on one of them could have left in the summer in harry Maguire. the other came in for free johnny evans because we couldn't afford to bring in another center back due to financial restrictions that's what i believe and partly what we've been told anyway yeah. not to mention the injuries we've already sustained to luke shaw rafa varan mason mount currently out as well uh we've been hit by the injury bug early in this campaign and, and hopefully that doesn't continue over everything just the manner of how we collapsed is the reason why under Eric Ten Hag under so many different coaches now we have failed to take that next step up I was gonna speak about the top half record or against top size again but it's much more than that when you speak about the mentality issues that have plagued this team's success now for a decade let's have a look at this Jaden Sancho situation for example fresh on our minds was missing from the squad. Eric Ten Hag was asked why, and he noted that Jaden's performance in training was essentially not good enough. Now, there's been a lot of discourse about this, with even myself at the time frustrated in the heat of the moment. Same with human people. But if only we knew what was to come after. I don't know how long after, but Jaden Sancho himself posted an entire statement alluding to those comments from Eric Ten Hag being a lie basically oh dear. I'm gonna read that statement here posted on Jaden Sancho's X account I keep on saying Twitter so that's a bit of progression X what a whole lot of foolishness eh but anyway people don't believe everything you read I will not allow people saying things that is completely untrue I've conducted myself in training very well this week. I believe there are other reasons for this matter that I won't go into. I've been a scapegoat for a long time, which isn't fair. All I want to do is play football with a smile on my face and contribute to my team. I respect all decisions that are made by the coaching staff. I play with fantastic players and grateful to do so, which I know every week is a challenge. I will continue to fight for this badge no matter what. You know, my first question is why? I can see both sides of the story. People asking why Ten Hag had to say what he said, why he had to draw out Sancho, but also why Sancho felt like the right decision was to release a statement that would bring even more disrepute around the football club, which will make these next two weeks very long extremely long i don't even know what to say except for this club remains a mess from top to bottom you don't know what to believe but what i do know is that there is a lack of true professionals in this football club oh, yeah the culture is non-existent which contributes to my first point and the management starting from ownership to board level is so below par for a football club of this magnitude ladies and gentlemen this isn't the first time we've seen these statements or even heard leaks in the past. Nope. Why do these things continue to persist? No matter the manager in charge, no matter the players who lace up. Manchester United are in a dangerous path of self-destruction and I'm sick and tired of this yo-yo mentality. Up and down, round and round this vicious cycle. Something has to give. These incidents should not be happening at all and that is the end all be all. We don't see everything that happens internally, but we can find out a lot from what is released to the public. And this is just another piece of evidence to strengthen that case. This 22's view segment is all about you. Rhyming on the beat. But anyway, on Twitter, the YouTube community tab, 
we've asked you to have your say about the game. And the same will be said about news we're going to be covering in the next few United Twins episodes. So look out for that. CM22ENT on Twitter and the YouTube community tab. Subscribe if you're new. Without a further ado, let's see some comments. Blessings to Roland at Pros Only Sports saying, probably our best game in the season, but lost due to a lack of concentration at the end. Big games are all about fine margins. Hopefully the injuries aren't too bad. ETH has some thinking to do during the international break and for sure. Hmm. It looks like Leach are and uh, Alejandro Garnacho, even though well, Garnacho didn't come off of an injury per se, but Leicher did. Looks like they were off to international duty. No boots on fit on legs or anything like that. No crutches. That's some good news. But yeah, uh, a lot of thinking for Eric Ten Hag to do over the international break. Something just isn't clicking. And I know I said earlier in the episode, I was kind of speaking about the build-up play. And maybe I didn't express my thoughts on the overall game and how we did build up from the back properly because i'm thinking about it now and even though i did like the element of patience slowing down the game to really get get some confidence away from home at the same time things just kept on breaking down long balls from Leach from casemiro going nowhere um you know passing into the midfield giving the ball away just constant breakdowns in the midfield in the final third and mm -hmm. those are the things that really need to be improved if we are to be a threat if we are to be have an effective attack an effective midfield right now there are many things in this squad that just aren't clicking defensively i thought there were positives but once again you bring on the defenders and things kind of went down because those are really what four fifth choice center backs because Lindelof is off. That's another guy we've got to worry about. Hopefully he's all good. Varane injured. Leach is there, obviously. He's had some worries early on in this season. But hopefully he's cool. So, yeah. There are a lot of things to iron out. A lot of issues. I hope we can do it. I'm not really overly optimistic in that regard. We'll just have to see what happens when the time comes. Blessings to Cleese Ramadine Alessi. This is a poor result. I was almost arguing with some United friends I was watching a match with. To capitulate like that, some of these players don't have the mentality. And right on, right on. We've been having these conversations. We've even had the conversation today and spoken about mentality. Mm -hmm. And it runs from top to bottom. It's a massive issue that needs to be fixed. There are a lot of people on, on social media who have said, even though that you know there were a few fan favorites in this team whatever you want to call it those guys may have to leave in order to transform the overall mentality just because of all of the failures they've been through and and us not being sure if you can really overcome that what do you think in the comments no doubt about it there are positives to point out during the game and i'm sure we can all speak about those in the comments but sunday for me was also another example of where we are as a football club on and off the pitch <laughs> the next five games after the international break will be testing champions league Calabao cup now starting up so we have to hit the ground running hoping for some good news which would make a change <laughs> but as we all know it's never a slow day at Manchester United and right now things are looking slightly bleak so maybe some positive comments in the chat to cheer us all up over this international break ladies and gentlemen if you did enjoy the video please hit that like button it supports all of us twins and pushing us pushes us further into the stratosphere the atmosphere whatever yes, you want to call it like subscribe share oh. to your friends and frenemies until the next time we'll see you lost in our